Hello, I'm Elfstick. Welcome back to the Waystone, Season 4, Episode 21. We're going to be working in the Nether today. Yes, for a viable source of gold. So we're going to be slapping up a gold farm for those golden carrots and powered rails. Now, I think there is a gold farm in the works over in Captain Irony's personal tunnel, but he hasn't been on for a time, so I want to make my own source of gold and other members of the Waystone. This is going to be community-based, not shop-based. It's going to be pretty close to my personal portal. So it's going to be nice to just dart over here and get some recipes if we need those. So let's jump up here. I've done some off-camera work just right below the bedrock. So we'll have some storage and a nice access point for this gold farm. Oh, doesn't this look nice? And we've got some new variants on the Waystone. All the smooth variants of 1.13. So we've got smooth sandstone. We've got smooth stone, smooth red sandstone, and smooth quartz. I've used some in this design. You can see the sto smooth stone right there. Uh, we've got the smooth quartz. I think that's the only two I use. Uh, it'd be really cool to use these two as well. I wonder what those look like all together in like a big wall or something. I'd be, I bet it'd be really cool. All right. And oh yeah, this is the end sky map too. You wouldn't have thunk it. <laughs> right here. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I like it. Looks smooth. It covers up the sea lanterns. So we're going to break the bedrock in today's episode. I haven't done that yet. And I want to break it right here so we can just go straight up. I have the coordinates all marked out. I think that is 127. So why 127? We're looking at 25. Uh, maybe that's not where we can go up. I thought that was 127. Oh, boy. <laughs> I had just like... Arrange the entire room to go up right there, I believe. Yeah, that, that's, that looks about right, because we'd have to go up this way. I wonder if I'd done that incorrectly. Is there... Is... <laughs> oh, God. I'm scared. Oh. Oh, okay, that's where it's meant to be. I, I came back in the design because I thought... Well, I'm going to fix that, but that's where you can access... The roof, because we're looking at 127 right there for the Y level. And unfortunately, we cannot use the egg drop method. You can use the dragon egg and break the bedrock by exploiting the lazy chunks. Uh, don't, I think they fixed that 1.13, so you'd have to use some other crazy method with headless piston. So let's go back down here, uh, take another look and make sure this is where we want it. Yeah, it's going to line up with the ladder. That's the way I was wanting to position it anyways. Uh, what's this? Ooh, smooth quartz. Don't want to let that one go. And I'm pretty sure this still works. This method, the interpro method, a lot of people will say, hey, you need bedrock surrounding the entire area. But, you know, you could put a block there if you have it and a ladder. And then you could just interpro into that. And you should be able to get into the top of the nether. No worries. I'm not stuck. There is the other gold farm from Captain Irony's personal tunnel. So I guess the next directive is to go ahead and start packing up a bedrock breaking shulker box and get a rolling on this and try to get it done so that we can have personal access to the roof of the nether. This would be really good for mob transportation as well. Oh boy, new spawn decorations. This is looking good, Llama. You did a great job, man. I've been seeing the edges of it, but I haven't really stopped and looked at the design. I am loving the way that lantern design looks. And it reminds me a lot of Season 3, just more medieval-ish. And I'm hoping every Sunday we're going to get back into the swing of live streaming. I'm, I'm hoping. I can't really find time to do it myself. Hopefully that changes, but we've been discussing it in the background. I'm hoping Canelia sells gunpowder at her shop. That's one thing I'm needing here. Uh, we've got rockets. Uh, this is mending books. I don't think it'd be in those. We've got, ooh, gunpowder, yes, and it's one diamond per two stacks. That is pretty cheap. I am needing some for TNT, because we're going to be doing the bedrock breaking adventures. I'm going to be needing that. Uh, let's see, I should have some diamonds in my in-chest tidbits. Let's go ahead and grab those and maybe get a pretty hefty stack of gunpowder. Let's see, uh, probably could do this whole roll. How about that, huh? Hey, hey, yeah, let's do this. And that should cover it. I'm just going to get a bunch of sand. I've got a bunch of that because I've been clearing out the base area. That should get us started for today's project. Oh, I got nine stacks. We all remember what happens when we mess with Canelia. 
Oh, that's kind of funny, actually. <laughs> yeah, I think I learned my lesson. I'm pretty sure I even made MLG glasses swoop onto Canelia's face. I <laughs> Good times, good times. Season 3 was just full of all kinds of fun stuff. And I think I've got everything I need. Oh, just, I dumped those blocks. No, I dumped those out purposely. Anyways, I think I've got everything I need for this project. And it seems we have a zombie pigman spawning problem in here, since they're all blocked down there. Uh, may want to figure out something with this. Mm, could use carpet. I don't want to block all this beautiful design, though. Uh, I want to probably do a time lapse of doing this because it's going to take just a bit of tinkering until we can get it right. It's going to find the right coordinate and everything. Yeah, let's roll the time lapse on this. It's going to be a mini one. Alakazam, the bedrock breaking machine. This thing is pretty nifty and it's pretty compact too. And I guess it would work in the same concept that the dragon egg would. So you can have your own client side render distance and the server distance in like previous versions. And then you can drop an egg into the bedrock with the lazy chunks. And that has to replace that with something because it's something supposed to be there, but it's not. It's kind of weird how the mathematics works. Basically this, you were just blowing up the extension of the piston and it's transferring it into the correct piston, which is going to tell that bedrock there's something there, but there's not. And it's going to pretty much just clear out the area for us. So it's going to be nice. I haven't even uh, tried it out. So we'll flick this lever. That should have broke the bedrock right below these pistons. Ah ha 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 ho. Oh, ho 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 ho. We have access to the top of the nether now. And is it in the crack block? Oh, look at that. Hey, what's this? Big zombie pigment party while I'm doing all the work above? Oh, well, get a couple of missing blocks there. But temporarily, I'm just going to place this stuff here. And my friends, not too bad. Not too bad. Ah, now that we broke through the bedrock, we've got some creativity going on in the background. Decided to use this method for zombie pigment farming. We've got some eggs in the center, and at a certain range, they will track said eggs and then fall into the pit. Now, I didn't know this design was already on YouTube. I sort of just kind of came up with it. Uh, for full optimization, I had done a donut instead of the square, which was normally used. And they only are attracted to these said eggs in a 23 block range. I've got a testing struts right here. So, if you were to put in a zombie pigman, he is going to be attracted to that at block 22. He's going to go to it, and I'm going to smack him before he does get to it. <laughs> and if we've done this a little bit further out, aside from the optimal range, we will see that he just stands still. At block 24, he will not go for the turtle egg. Sad. Put him on block 23, and that is the furthest that he can be attracted to it. So that's how I've optimized the farm. I've got all the glass works for the gas spawning. There's not much you could do for magma cubes. I put in some iron golems, but they would have to be on this half of the circle. And they sort of make their way there. Uh, I'm not, I don't know the best way to prevent that. But we'll just have to deal with that. But it seems like this is operating pretty well. It's not as efficient as like an El Mango farm, but it's just enough gold. Although, it would be beneficial to note that glass magma cubes spawn at a certain distance. And man, do they just keep going. <laughs> I mean, they just keep going for those eggs. They really want some breakfast. Just gotta gather the materials and get started on this. Gonna be doing it in a form of a timeline. So, let's go ahead and get this rolling.
ladies and gentlemen, the gold farm in all of its glory, in the works. You can see all these zombie pigmen falling to their demise. It is great. And I made a very important discovery that they could still see the turtle eggs through the trap doors. So that is very important because I have two layers. And so, like, little zombie pigmen jockeys that spawn with chickens, they could float down there and crush your bottom egg. Thankfully, this has fixed it for us. We don't have to worry about them getting inside anymore, and I've got my glass up to block the gas spawns, which I had done that earlier, or as I was building the farm. Unfortunately, when it comes to magma cubes, there's not much you could do about it, just the iron golems to attract them off the edge. But because this donut is so big, it's really hard to attract magma cubes from the inner segment of the circle to go outwards. So we're just gonna leave them. It should be fine. I'm still getting a lot of zombie pigment spawns. Uh, let's see what it looks like whenever we fly out here a bit. <laughs> oh yeah. And it'd be much more efficient once we kind of like AFK right here, I believe. Like right in here seems to be the golden spot because we'll block the spawns if there's otherwise. And as you can see, there is the zombie pigman jockey. Oh, he's going to survive. <laughs> and uh, we don't have to worry about him getting the eggs anymore. We're magma cubes too. Hey, good source of magma cream right there. Fire resistance at its best. And for Captain Irony's farm, I had blocked it off with leaf blocks just in case he wanted to come back to it because I know how Captain Irony is. He likes his projects, in particular the bigger projects. If he ever comes back to this, then he could just remove the leaves and get back to work if he wants to. Oh no, there was a hole there. <laughs> They got blocked off everything. We don't have to worry about gas. We don't have to worry about other zombie pigmen spawning outside of our farm. But this thing is going to be awesome. I mean, just look how many zombie pigmen are falling down. Oh, it's great. So there's been a couple of things that's happened this week. I broke my eyeglasses. So I can kind of see, just not the extreme details. That's the reason I've increased my GUI scale. And I got a new boom arm. This thing is fantastic. Like, it is incredibly better than the one I had. I had a very cheap one. And that was from you guys. So thank you so much for watching my videos. I use my YouTube revenue to buy it. So I do appreciate that. You guys help out so much. I, I should probably do something about this before this becomes a problem. <laughs> Don't look at me. I believe that's everything. It's a mess, <laughs> but it is a functional gold farm. I even implemented a jockey system. So if a jockey falls down right here, he'll just run out there, fall into the cactus. You don't even have to block it in or anything. He, he's very relentless when it comes to getting that egg. So he'll just stay there looking at the egg and die. Stupid zombie pigmen. They're stupid sometimes. Got my whole sorting system only for gold nuggets because it's all I need. And everything else is disposed into the lava. Neat little system. I mean, it's really simple just, you know, to put together. It's something we've done a hundred times on camera, so I thought to just go ahead and do it and get it over with. Let me get my nether rack out of the way here. It's it's, it's super messy. Uh, <laughs> should have thought about this one. Uh, let's just take this out real quick underneath the hoppers, and I believe that is every single piece of nether rack out of our way. This is ugly from the outside for sure, but on the inside, it's, you know, kind of tidy. It's kind of neat. So there we are. Let's go ahead and pop this up. Oh, nope. We, we, don't, we don't want that. We want the glass. Dying zombie pigment in the background. Let's turn that off just real quick and inspect our goods. Now, I haven't let this go for a long time. I think I actually cleaned out the chest not too long ago. So let's check this out. Ooh. Hey. So when Fos logs off, this thing is going to go crazy, and we're going to get a lot of gold. Uh, I can't wait to see what it looks like. Uh, might have to wait till next episode, because I've got to move on to stone block recording. But hey, Operational Gold Farm, right where we need it. Oh, and by the way, Operation Oceanside is a success as well. It looks like someone's been doing a lot of work over here at base. <laughs> Leech leech stop doing so much work. I cleared out this corner and to clear up some of that sand I'm trying to help him out, but he is just flying through this almost half of it is complete We could take down this part of the sand wall, too, and man this is finished. It's just it's coming along guys We're, we're gonna get there. So leech leech. Thank you so much for all the help man You're incredible and tried to maybe prep up a big gift for you or something pretty soon <laughs> It's a lot of work, seriously, I mean, I haven't even cleared these sand walls yet.
Ooh, yeah, that soul sand is sticking out like a sore thumb. I'm gonna have to fix that sometime soon. And every time I see this waffle stick logo on this struts, it makes me think of a waffle stick caterpillar. So it's like waffle pillar. That's probably the strangest thing I've ever said on camera. So <laughs> might need to fix that at some point. I'm not a dirty caterpillar, at least. Lastly, I need your help. I need some recommendations. What should I put on top of this hill for the frontier island? Oh, we need a main structure. Sort of like we got over the hillside there. We've got that frontier residence that's encapsulating the trading system. And we've got this watchtower that's encapsulating our patrons. And also the sugarcane farm. So just need some recommendations. What should I put up here? I was thinking more of like a farmhouse. You know, that way we could put in some wheats on the side of the hill. But that's still up to debate. So I will credit you. Just let me know. Because I, I need some ideas. Jordan Pretty had recommended that I do a cozy cottage, and that's going to be more of a side project for me, because I sort of got some coziness going on over in that area. So we'll see what we could do with it. Uh, might do it between the trees, or even do it on the sides over here. But I think that's going to be about it for today's episode, guys. Hope you did enjoy watching. We'll see you next episode. Have a fantastic day.